Welcome, delicious friend. They say that Fallen London is a city of a thousand stories, and they'd be right. And I'm here to share those stories with you. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Broken Giant 1844, and enjoy. <laughs> Do you recall what I said to you on the day we met, delicious friend? Do you remember the warning I gave? Shall I remind you? I warned you never to fall in love, to not make the same mistakes I have twice now. I'm sure you've noticed, however, the amorous temptations of our fair city during your time down here, especially with the Feast of the Rose in full swing as it is. If love then is so dangerous down here, dangerous enough for me to warn you away from it, then why would it seem that the city itself is conspiring to bring love and romance to the people? I told you something else that day that holds the answer. In the deepest matters of the bazaar, look to love, always. Today's discussion is on a singular topic, one that reveals many of the motives of the great players in our fair city. These stories and secrets are some of the best kept in the Neath, and I understand if you would rather learn them yourself. You're staying then? Good. Today I shall tell you perhaps the most important story of them all. The story of why London is down here, why four cities came before it, and why two more cities may yet fall in its place. Today I will tell you the story of the bazaar itself. And to tell it, we must for now forget the Neath, and turn our gaze upwards beyond the surface, to the vast and cryptical high wilderness, the realm of the judgments. I suppose, then, you may be wondering, just what are the judgments? They are, as far as I can tell, the true authority in the universe. Made manifest as stars, they set and enforce the laws of reality wherever their light touches. In fact, the reason why the Neath is home to so many strange and abnormal creatures and phenomena is because the light of the judgments does not, for the most part, touch us down here. The judgments are the greatest beings on the great chain of being, a rigid caste system that all life is part of, knowingly or not. We are little more than blind, single-celled creatures to them, less than dust. If gods are real, they are most certainly the judgments, and our own star is no different. Due to the grand distances between the stars, the judgments employed a messenger, a creature somewhat analogous to a nightmare hybrid of crabs, pigs, and stone. If it had a name then, I do not know it, but to you and I, it is the Echo Bazaar. Long ago, when Babylon was young, the bazaar met the sun and fell hopelessly and completely in love. Its affections, it seems, were returned by the sun. Though, the sun likely loved the bazaar far less than the bazaar loved the sun. Nevertheless, this union proved fruitful, and the mountain of light was the result. Here, the story of the bazaar and the sun answers two questions. Firstly, we know the identity of one of the Z gods. Stone is the Mountain of Light, and the Mountain of Light is Stone. Her influence touches us all, for it is speculated she is the reason it is so damnably hard to die down here. She too has her progeny, Mount Nomad, the most fearsome of all Z beasts. Following their union, the Sun and the Bazaar were parted from one another for a time. The Bazaar never forgot its beloved, however, and yearned to be reunited with the Sun. Little did the bazaar know that there were two things that would prevent such union from ever becoming permanent. One reason was that the other judgments, if they ever found out, would never allow it. For you see, whilst the bazaar is a being of immense power compared to you or I, or even compared to creatures like the lawn flukes of Axial, it is still far lower on the great chain of being than the sun. The other judgments would sooner destroy both them and their daughter, rather than allow the relationship to continue. The second, more important, and ultimately far more tragic reason for the bazaar's separation from its beloved came when the bazaar returned to the sun. Rather than being greeted as a lover returned from a long absence, the Sun callously told the Bazaar to deliver a message to another judgment. A message of love. The Bazaar was heartbroken. Still bound by its duty, the Bazaar departed across the High Wilderness once more to deliver the Sun's love message to another judgment. 
Upon arrival, the bazaar delivered the message and was horrified to learn that the answer of the other judgement was a rejection of the sun. The bazaar was shocked and deeply distressed, for now it had to deliver the rejection notice to its beloved, and the bazaar knew that the sun would not take this rejection well, that it would most likely die from the anguish, drowning in its own tears. And so, as the bazaar left, it came up with a plan. Said plan was to throw itself at the mercy of the judgments, and beg for time. Time to deliver the notice. Time to find a love story so pure, and so true, that the sun would not die upon receiving the rejection notice. And hopefully, time to find a story that proved love between two links of the great chain of being can be possible, and perhaps then reunite with the beloved sun forever. The bazaar was granted its wish, and given seven cities worth of time to accomplish its task, lest it be destroyed by celestial monsters, draconic and fierce, destroyed along with its beloved, and its child. To help in this task, the bazaar enlisted the help of a group of strange outcasts from the High Wilderness, who came to it to escape a string of misfortune and failure. The beings who would become known as the masters of the bazaar. It has been five cities worth of time, and the bazaar has yet to find its love story. It seems to have fallen into a deep depression now, for its tears are the lacquer, and it has enough of them to blanket a city. It clings desperately to memories of simpler, happier times, and it is whispered that the masters themselves are losing faith in the mission, though I personally don't, publicly, doubt their conviction. As you know, I am rather loyal toward them. If the glimpses of my destiny are true, I had better be. There have been five cities fallen so far. The bazaar is running out of time for both itself, its beloved, and its child. Is there any wonder it cries? There is something rather haunting about the situation of the bazaar. For out of all the love stories it has engineered, from the story of the manager of the Royal Bethlehem and the King with a Hundred Hearts, to the Duchess and the Cantagaster, to Shiren and her once dashing smuggler, to the traitor Empress and her consort, to the Comtessa and her Clayman, to absconding devils, to rubbery companions, and to an artist's model and a bespectacled archivist, the most tragic story of them all is the Bazaar Zone. Does this excuse the misery many have suffered down here? the broken hearts, minds, and bodies. I leave that up to you to decide. But I would remind you that humans have done much to cause suffering in the name of love. It is in the nature of all beings to protect those who mean the most to us. If the bazaar did not care for itself, for its beloved, and for its child, that would make it a true monster in my eyes. Perhaps now then, delicious friend, you see why I am so loyal to the masters and the bazaar. Perhaps now you see why I care so little for the revolutionaries and their ilk. And perhaps now you understand why the price for every city, save the third, has been the life of a loved one. Perhaps now you understand why love seems to be at the root of many of the stories in our fair city. Perhaps now you understand that why, in the deepest matters of the bazaar, you should look to love. Always.